Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have another review for you guys today, one of my personal favorite distributions, and I'm sure I've reviewed this before, but I wanted to take another look at it and show this to you guys, especially for those of you that haven't seen it yet. And for this review, I'm going to be taking a look at CrunchBang++. This is the version that's based on Debian 9, so I know Debian 10 is right around the corner, and I'm sure I'll probably review that when it comes out. But for right now, we have the Debian 9 edition of CrunchBang++, and I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you guys. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So here we are at the actual boot screen for CrunchBang++. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it in a moment. But first of all, let me talk a little bit about what CrunchBang++ actually is so you'll know what to expect when I actually get the installed version finished. CrunchBang is actually a special and unofficial spin of Debian that uses OpenBox for its graphical environment instead of a desktop environment. OpenBox is actually a window manager. A desktop environment is a full featured suite that gives you a graphical user interface and various utilities to uh, basically graphically manage and interact with your distribution. And OpenBox is just a window manager. Window managers generally have no features whatsoever. So while that might sound like a really bad thing to have no features, it, the benefit of a window manager is that it takes little to no system resources, leaving the majority of the resources available to the applications that you want to run. That's not to say that CrunchBang++ doesn't have features. It certainly does. They add that in, but essentially they create their own spin of Debian, but with OpenBox because Debian itself doesn't have its own OpenBox spin. And CrunchBang++ is based on the distribution known as CrunchBang, which is one of my favorite distributions of all time that sadly the main creator decided to basically stop updating that and the distribution died. And CrunchBang++ is one of the community continuations that was created in order to keep that going. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna launch the installer. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the install. So I'll just use the graphical install option here. I'll press enter. And here we have the first screen of the installer here. So it's defaulting to English for the language. And you know, we see the CrunchBang++ logo in the upper left corner. And then up our right, we see Debian because it is based on Debian. So anyway, I'll click continue. In United States, I'll select that, continue. American English, continue again. And the installer is not gonna be as simplistic as most desktop Linux installers, but it's fairly straightforward. There's just gonna be more steps in the process because we get more control, it asks more questions. So it says load installer components from CD. I have a flash drive installed, but Debian calls it a CD. It treats it as if it is a CD, whether or not it actually is. Okay, so here it says, um, you know, it's detecting network hardware. It says some of your hardware requires non-free firmware files to operate. It's talking about my Wi-Fi driver. So I'm gonna go ahead and say no to this. It's asking if I want to load the firmware from removable media. This is a Debian thing, and this is why I don't really recommend Debian to most users. There is a spin of Debian that does include these things built in. It's hard to find. If you know where to look, you can get to it. And, um, you know, since CrunchBang++ is based on Debian, it can sometimes be hard to run on newer hardware, and sometimes you have to set up some hardware manually. This is not something that you're going to run into if you were to, say, run, you know, Ubuntu or something like that. Not to say that it's really hard to get going, but I would say that CrunchBang might be for advanced beginners or intermediate users. Just keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and click Continue here. All right, so it's asking me for the host name. I'll leave it as Debian, that's fine. Click continue, leave that blank. Full name for the user, just put my first name, password, and continue. Eastern time zone, so it asks you a lot of questions here, but this is typical. It's basically the same as a Debian installer. It's asking the, pretty much the same questions. I'm gonna use the entire disk. And I'm gonna install it on my Samsung SSD. 
And we can have a separate home partition. That's probably a better option. I'll click continue on that. And then finish. It's going to give me a confirmation, so I'm just going through this kind of quickly, but you get the idea. It's pretty self-explanatory. And now it's actually installing, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video, and I'll be right back when this is finished. All right, continuing on with the installation, I'll select the default. We do want to use a mirror. And I'll just choose the default for that. This is setting up the package manager. And we do want to install Grub to the master boot record. Continue. And we want to be careful here and make sure we select the same hard drive that we actually install the distribution on. So that in my case, it's the Samsung. Click continue and let that install. And we're finished, so I'll click continue. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys. But before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. And their cloud manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. All right, so we're here at the default desktop of CrunchBang++. So what you're actually seeing is that it's a very minimalistic desktop. We do have a panel up here at the top and we have virtual workspaces that we can get to by simply clicking on that tab. So it's almost like, like a tabbed panel, which is pretty cool. And we have our tray icons up here on the upper right hand corner. Now that's not typical of a window manager to have a panel or tray icons. These are some things that were added to give the user a uh, required set of features or, or features that most people actually want to have on a distribution. But the benefit here is that it's very lightweight. Now notice we have no application menu. So I could right click on the desktop and we have an application menu of sorts that was created for us and we could see various things that are installed by default. So of course we have for Office, LibreOffice, if I go there, it's not actually installed, but if I click on this right here and click install, and then I'll just simply say Y enter, it's gonna go ahead and install that for us. I'll put in the super secret password. And it's simply just using the built-in package manager, but you get the idea, it's gonna go ahead and install. And we do have this welcome screen that came up right here that I'm gonna to get to in just a moment that is kind of like a first run wizard, if you will, that you will see the first time you log into this environment. Now, on the upper right hand corner, we get a little idea of some of the value here. We have very little RAM being used at idle. I mean, it's installing some packages here, so the memory usage is gonna be a bit higher than normal. But this is less than the KDE edition of Manjaro that I reviewed in another video. So if you really want to squeeze your performance as well as you possibly can, then this is definitely a desktop or a distribution that you may want to consider. The CPU usage is actually being a little hammered here. That's to be expected because it's installing a bunch of packages. So it says press any key to exit. So I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal. And I don't think it's installed, but let's see which HTOP it is. Oh, wow, cool. So it's installed by default. So I'll go ahead and open that. And we could get a little bit of a better look at the resources at idle. So load average is really low here. This is a dual core uh, laptop with hyper threading. So it shows up as if it were four. The CPU load is actually really low on each core. It's less than five straight down and we have just above 300 megabytes of usage on the RAM. So the majority of my resources are made available to my application. 
or any application I want to run. And here we have the first run wizard here, or the uh, welcome, Crunchbang++ welcome app. So it says press any key to continue, press enter, and you can see some of the things it wants to do. So do you want to update your software sources? So I do, enter. And I'll type in the password here. Do you want to install updates? Um, sure, I'll go ahead and do that. And there's quite a few here, and it's just automated, so you didn't even get a, really a chance to see how many it's going to install. But we do have quite a few updates, so I'll let those finish. And while that's installing, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up a file manager window. It's using Thunar as a file manager, and you can see that they've actually customized the icon theme and um, the color scheme and, and all parts of this to basically be one consistent look and feel. And it's very snappy, so I'm just, I mean, there's some lag with the mouse. So if you see me um, being really slow with the mouse, that's only because of the screen recorder, nothing to do with the distribution. I'm having an issue right now, actually. Um, so ignore that. But you basically can see that we have a file manager with custom icons. So we could browse our file system and see what files and folders that we have. Of course, we don't have anything yet because I haven't moved anything over to this. And that's our file manager, that's Thunar. So as you can see, this is the same file manager that typically comes with XFCE desktop. Since OpenBox is not a desktop environment, it doesn't really have anything that's preferred in default applications. So that's installing there. Now remember, we did install LibreOffice, and now that we've done that, we do have that available to us here in the menu. So LibreOffice 5 is extremely out of date, actually, unfortunately. That's to be expected because Debian 9 is quite old. But that doesn't matter because Debian 10 is coming and we'll have a newer version of LibreOffice um, as soon as that comes out. We, can, we should be able to upgrade this to Debian 10 as soon as that comes out. So um, now LibreOffice 5 is still plenty usable, don't get me wrong. But it's good to see that we have the option of installing that. And let's take a look at some of the other applications. So web browser, we have Firefox. This is the ESR release, so we're gonna be quite a bit behind. That's to be expected because the ESR release moves slower. So if I go about Firefox, um, actually it moved up to 60.5. That must be because I ran the updates uh, just a few uh, minutes ago before I hit the record button, I noticed it was terribly out of date. But actually that's uh, not quite as out of date as I thought it would be. So uh, we have a fairly current version of Firefox here, so that's always good to have. So other applications that we have, so we have VLC for viewing video files. XF Burn we have for creating bootable media. We have FileZilla installed here, HexChat IRC. We also have uh, these nifty submenus where it'll actually show menus for various um, system components or you know components that are specific to your configuration. In this case, it's able to read your SSH config and put in entries here for various hosts that you might connect to. And we could also um, install Dropbox as well. So there's a lot of helpful things that we can uh, basically install and also helpful menus. Like right here, the Places menu allows us to browse our file system right from this right-click menu here on the desktop. Now moving on, it's asking me if I want to um, add printer support. Um, this is useful to have, but I don't have a printer here at the studio, so I'll just say no. Java support, no. And I've already installed LibreOffice, so I'll say no. And then I'll just say no to this because there's other screens that we can uh, walk through, but it's just basically giving us um, the option to uh, install various things. And it's helpful to have, but the other things that's gonna come up doesn't really apply to us. I'll go ahead and close this. So you might be thinking that this is a very bare bones uh, distribution and you'd be right, it, that's the point. It's very lightweight. There's not a lot of features here other than maybe the fancy stuff they put in the right-click menu and the welcome screen, but it's just basically enough desktop environment to basically give you something to launch applications in. It's not trying to be flashy with animations and all these other things that you could argue that nobody needs. This is for people that want to run their Linux desktop given the most resources they can to the applications that they want to run with the graphical user interface not getting in the way. If that's you, then this is a great distribution. Now, as you can see, it's you know a very easy to follow 
um, user interface. We even have Conky here on the right. It gives you a cheat sheet of all the shortcut keys that you can use to launch various applications. It tells you what your CPU usage is, your disk usage, uh, swap, RAM, how long the system's been up, things like that. So you definitely get some useful information. And this panel here can be customized. There's various customization that you can do um, here in settings, for example. It's the Tint 2 panel, I believe. So if I was to edit that, we can see that we have customization. Now notice I went to edit it, it opened up in a text editor. So this isn't a beginner distribution. This is not something that you would uh, you know, give an absolute beginner to use. It's basically for people that are advanced beginners or intermediate or more and just want to have full control over their system. I'll go ahead and close that. So you might be wondering then, okay, well, how do I install packages? Well, you could use the command line. I mean, that's one way to do it, right? You could just do sudo apt install whatever it is you want to install. And that's fair game. That's valid. But if you're looking for a graphical package manager, it, there is one actually. So if I go down here to system and I go to synaptic package manager, go ahead and put in my password. Synaptic is a tried and true old school application for doing package management. And if you've used Debian before, I'm sure you've probably run into this. You have different categories here on the left that you can uh, basically go through and uh, check out. So we have games, and then you could, get, you could install like 3D Chess, for example, if that's something that you want to install, you can do that. Whether or not it's going to be added to the right-click menu, that's another story altogether. Um, probably not. Um, that's kind of one of the challenges here. There is a way to get it to automatically do that. But again, this is for more advanced people. So, um, but installing applications is something that you can definitely do as you can see here. Go ahead and close this. The only thing that I think is strange about the release, it's not necessarily strange, but the idea is having a lightweight desktop with just enough GUI to get the job done. And that's the point of a window manager instead of a full desktop environment. A window manager is for people that just want a way of having applications to be open on their screen. But, you know, they're adding all kinds of things here. They're adding all these settings and an application menu. They're adding a panel and they're adding these tray icons and a clock, none of which a window manager actually has usually. So you could argue that by them adding all these things, they're kind of defeating the purpose of a window manager. However, uh, I think it actually pays off because it's very responsive. It uses very few resources. It just responds so quickly. Like if I was just to go ahead and open an application, so I'll just open a web browser, so I'll click on it, and it's pretty much almost instantaneous. This is an old laptop. This is, well, not terribly old, but it's three or four years old, something like that. I have a review of this laptop on my channel when I first bought it some time ago, but it runs fine. It runs very fast, it's very responsive, and this distribution is great. Is it for beginners? Well, like I mentioned, no, it's not. So you definitely want to uh, manage your expectations accordingly, but I think that this is something that's going to be a lot of fun for those of you that you know want a more advanced uh, control or a lightweight desktop environment to where XFCE isn't low enough in resource usage for you. This takes that to a whole new level. So if that's you and you're that type of user, I recommend that you check this out. And if you do, let me know in the comments below what you thought. I look forward to reading your comments and I will have additional reviews on my channel here pretty soon, so stay tuned and I'll see you in that time. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below, and there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, Second Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.